the journey of one's life. We all know how it starts, but where does it end? When you can't keep going? When you're only a husk slithering through the monotony? Where does it end? It doesn't. There is no end. It carries on, with or without. The Ouroboros swallows its greasy tail, and it's your choice with where it should end. <clears throat> or maybe not. I, I don't know anything. A bald man named Sayatama admires hero merch while out shopping with his e-boy cyborg, Genos. The citizens are under attack by this perverted lizard when a rank 7 S-class hero king arrives. He releases his signature move, intimidating the deviant and inspiring the audience. King's foe prostrates himself before his violent gaze. King is overwhelmed by the sudden publicity and makes a quick escape. Turns out King is a smelly otaku with a love for raunchy games. He is excited to bask in his new purchase. Saitama and Genos observe King in the wild from a safe distance. A womanly scream heralds the arrival of a gaming PC called G4, who has the desire to wear King as a flesh mask. King once more activates his iconic King engine. In an effort to escape, King convinces the robot that he can only fight at full power with an empty bladder. Genos and Saitama continue their observation. Observation. King makes a calculated retreat to a nearby restroom where he has a panic attack instead of a pee. Turns out King's engine is just the sound of his overactive heart pumping meat juice. He never wanted to be an S-class hero and does a barf in fear. The distant sounds of destruction causes King to flee. Genos uses his superior firepower to ward off the peeved automaton. King makes it to his goon cave safely and is immediately relaxed by the bittersweet caress provided by Otome Games. Saitama slid into King's room on the 22nd floor while no one was watching. King makes a persuasion attempt but fails, then rolls for intimidation and also fails. Saitama is suspicious of King's taste in games. Saitama uses his conversational dominance to persuade him into playing a fighting game. The robot is turned into soup then gives birth. Saitama admires King's gamer skills, then questions his decision to retreat from battle. King spills his orange juice all over the floor in a panic. A colossal bird reduces the apartment to rubble while King reflects on his bad luck. It turns out that King's success as an S-class hero is all due to Saitama's efficacy in dispatching monsters. Genos uses the power of science and overwhelming destructive force to deliver justice. Saitama learns the truth about King and obliterates the bird. King realizes Saitama's power and recalls the time when they first met. He cries manly tears and apologizes to Saitama, who takes the news well and even gives him advice on getting stronger. Saitama flutters away, leaving King alone to his various rocks, metal piping, and internal demons. Genos harvests the Cadbury robot's tender insides for nutrients. His general practitioner is concerned about Genos's recent obsession with power and reminds him of his quest for vengeance. Genos remains determined. Stitch, the Hero Association's head of HR, encourages a gathering of the chronically unemployed to help exterminate monsters. He brought a magician, a deranged pyromaniac, and buff Waluigi to be his security, and is confident in their strength. Sonic is lurking in the crowd, but disappointed that he cannot smell Saitama's scent within, he reveals that the fortune teller's prediction from last season is still in effect, and the whole reason the felons were invited was to hire additional soldiers. Sonic turns classified documents into confetti and departs, dreaming of a day when Saitama returns to him. A green babe wearing a small animal appears. Her name is Fubuki, rank 1 in B-class, and she intends to crush Saitama under her totalitarian fist. Fubuki and Sonic share a brain cell together. King hoards all the consumable items and Saitama destroys his controller in rage. Sitch tries to explain the severity of the Hero Association's situation, but has no control over the room. Garo, Bang's rogue student, introduces himself, insults the delinquents, and urges them to publicly execute him. Sitch sicks his guardians onto Garo, who dispatches David Blaine and Big Waluigi. Garo finds solace in the practice of monster philosophy, and explains that he himself was a monster all along. He then steals a wizard's hand, kills every 
everyone, proclaims he is the prophesied harbinger of destruction, and pieces out. Fubuki is on the prowl for Saitama. Genos wears a cute apron and lectures Saitama on not reporting his quarry to the association. Genos senses a threat. Saitama senses an item in his game. Sonic falls from the sky and declares himself to be Saitama's lover. Genos calls Sonic out for being a freaky stalker. Meanwhile, Saitama accidentally overwrites King's save data. Fubuki sends one of her cronies to extract Saitama from his house. She introduces herself, but Saitama is still confused. She is enraged. Fubuki reveals that she is the fewer of a B-class authoritarian regime, and that Saitama must swear fealty to her or suffer her wrath. Saitama deflects her subtle threats and realizes that she is just a bully. He wants none of that business and says no. Fubuki unleashes her zealots, who are instantly defeated. Fubuki takes matters into her own hands and throws sand at One Punch Man while reciting a poem. Saitama is unaffected and lectures her on proper hero etiquette. She is enraged. The fight between Genos and Sonic interrupts her attempts at persuasion. Saitama acts as a bulwark for Fubuki and is upset at Genos' unabashed violence. Fubuki realizes that she is just a big fish in a small pond. Sonic throws a bomb and becomes aroused at the sight of Saitama. Everyone gets out a ruler to measure their power levels. Genos assails Sonic with his rainbow flames, while Saitama admires from the sidelines. Genos steals Sonic's hair and falls right into his trap. Genos decides the best option is to explode, but is thwarted by Saitama, who is against the demolition of his neighborhood. Saitama lets out his exceptional aura and does a couple of side jumps, incapacitating Sonic and winning the battle. Fubuki reveals her hatred for spoons and how she lives in the shadow of Tatsumaki, her superior sister. Her nefarious behavior is a byproduct of insecurity. Genos questions her motives for not advancing in ranking. Fubuki deflects, insisting that she has no hope of achieving rank 1 of A-class due to her weak moves. Speak of the devil and he arrives in Gucci slippers to beat the grape juice out of aboriginals. Fubuki explains that she is simply trying to defend herself in a world where the strong rule over the weak. King almost kills Fubuki with his sheer presence. He inquires about the PSP Saitama borrowed. Saitama is hesitant to admit he accidentally erased King's save data, but King doesn't mind. Fubuki and Genos are inspired by their camaraderie. In the after credits, Genos and Saitama are given their hero names, Demon Cyborg and Caped Baldi. Sitch is concerned about Garo, and Gary beats up Tank Top Vegetarian. Taranko, a feeble martial artist, gets pounded by Bang, then insulted for being weak. He seeks shelter from Bang's unexpected wrath and asks Genos for help. Genos reveals that Bang has been instructed by the association to defeat Gero, then deduces that Bang probably just wants to prevent Chiranko's untimely disembowelment. Saitama can't remember who Chiranko is. Chiranko wanders aimlessly through a forest at nighttime and encounters a skirmish between Gero, Moomin Rider, and the Tank Top troop. A vegetarian is slain and the Tank Tops quake in fear. Gero gets his mind mush slishy slushed by Tank Top Master, an S-Class hero. T.T. Earthbends, then casts Tank Top Rush, sending Garo into a graceful pirouette. Bang and his brother Bomb prepare for their manhunt. Garo emits a greasy aura, and then Big T kills Moomin Rider. He survives, but lectures Tank Top on the morality of taking another's life. Bicycle is ridiculed by the troop, but Tippy Top Top sides with Moomin and decides to let Garo leave. Garo has conflicting ideologies, and Water bends Tank Top into a wall, causing his meat mech to malfunction function. Garo goes to slaughter the Tank Top children, and Moomin Rider dies for real. Tank Top is felled, and his babies are mercilessly torn to pieces. Taranko emerges from the foliage, only to be met with immediate defeat. Some time later, Bang stumbles across the mangled figure of Taranko laying in the grass. Some of the local freaks are conversing about Garo's recent massacre. The fat man made of noses is confident in his fighting capabilities, until Garo shows up. Saitama delivers bananas to Moomin Rider and discusses his defeat. Tank Top interrupts, explaining that Garo is dangerous because his technique is meant for use on humans. Saitama is interested in martial arts. A little guy with a bowl cut is solicited by a strange man wearing slippers. The child tells Garo about his book, which contains knowledge of heroes and villains. Garo gets excited by the monsters in the hero almanac and selects his next target. Saitama bribes Taranko into explaining martial arts to him. Taranko goes a step further and gives Saitama a ticket to the upcoming tournament. 
Saitama is seduced by the hypnotic allure of prize money and contemplates illegally taking Chiranko's place. Gero starts a fight with Golden Ball. They do it in the alleyway. GB uses his special balls. They are ineffective. Spring Mustachio bounds into action to defend his precious ball. He admits an impressive fluorescent tomboy, but is parried. Golden Ball flees with Springo's husk in tow. A pervy old man who happens to be the director of the Hero Association is concussed by Gero. Sayatama runs into Gero while shopping. Gero naturally assumes Sayatama is an enemy and goes for the kill. Saitama destroys Gero, mistaking him for a rogue schizophrenic, and purchases an orange wig. Genos is given the wrong idea about Saitama's purchase and tries to schedule an emergency hair transplant for him. Gero wakes up on a pile of refuse, covered in wounds from the night before. The Hero Association's round table discusses Gero. He is deranged. King is requested to be a bigwig's bodyguard, but declines. Metal Bat picks up King's slack. The wealthy elite get to experience peasant food and break the sacred rules of Kaiten Zushi. Metal Bat contemplates homicide, then gets a call from his beloved sister, who berates him for not taking her shopping. A couple of worms kidnap Krusty Lip's offspring. Batman spits. Saitama impersonates Chiranko in the martial arts tournament. He is accosted by an old acquaintance of Chiranko. We learn that a fairy named Wolfman won the last tournament. However, the victor was only impersonating the real Wolfman, who was found unconscious after the final round. The tournament no longer allows headwear as a result. Saitama begins to fear the consequences of his actions. Gero borrows Mushroom Head's extensive knowledge of heroes for his malevolent inclinations. The chiseled acquaintance recalls the day Gero was expelled from Bang's dojo, then commends Saitama on having the cojones to enter the Super Fight tournament. Moomin and Chiranko discuss Saitama's heroism on the hospital's rooftop. Chiranko's associate, Sourface bullies Sayatama, who deflects by calling him a coward for fleeing from Gero. Sourface is big mad. Batboy bonked the pathetic worms and sits upon their carcasses. The executives squirm in delight. A much larger worm appears to avenge his slain brethren. A cloud of toxins emitted from a mushroom incapacitate the wealthy elite. Sayatama is bored. Gero hears about Metal Bat's fight from an evacuation announcement. Bat is assailed by the big centipede and Shroomer. He self flags to gain enlightenment and turns both the villains into goop. A sentient pineapple and kink lord arrive late. The suits discuss the possibility of Worm Chad, the elder centipede, awakening. It awakens, and the heroes take action. The worm is hard, but Metal Bat is equally hard. The populace flees. Gero encounters Metal Bat, who accepts his challenge. The association reflects on their situation and receives multiple emergency calls. Metal Knight begins testing his artillery, buying time for the executives to escape. Unfortunately, their retreat is obstructed by a rhino, his rubber chicken, and some goopy gunk. Large quantities of monsters are suddenly appearing in every city. Garo and Metal Bat brawl. Batman gains strength by taking damage. Garrow is impressed and Metal Bat is immobilized. Bat pulls a sneaky, but is impeded by his sister's unexpected appearance. Garrow is thwarted by her innocent demeanor and spares Metal Bat, who remains determined. He is slain by his sister's unprompted attack. Garrow and Metal Bat are observed by a chicken and a globular beast. The chicken produces an invitation to the Monster Association and hands it to Garrow, who tears it up. Pineapple Guy and Kink Lord are annihilated, and the monsters retreat with the high-value hostages. Heroes from all over the Megalopolis are overwhelmed by the Monster Association. Saitama dons his wig and prepares for his martial arts debut. The tournament participants are all introduced. Notable competitors include Bakuzan and four-time champion Suiru. Suiru was hoping to face the mysterious masked furry from the last tournament. Sourface is nervous. Saitama is threatened by Space Legolas. Saitama doesn't tie his belt correctly, but remains composed. Bomb and Bang are tracking Gero when the sound of battle lures them to a skirmish. Bang takes out his pent-up frustration on a Machamp, a sadistic dominatrix with a questionable forehead tattoo, and a Cuban gorilla lament over the fragility of heroes. A fish and an electric wizard defeat the roller skating steampunk frogman. The association is in a panic. Fubuki and her regime do battle with the slutty sadist. 
Meanwhile, Lightning defeats a woman, and Sour Face discusses the bracket seating. Saitama kills Space Legolas with a slap. Suiru and Lightning Max duel. The hero goes down with one kick. Sour Face is in awe, but Saitama remains unimpressed. Genos determines that Suiru can give Saitama a sip of martial arts and then gets a call to arms from the hero association. Snake and a regular guy begin their bout. There is a monster lurking around the area. Bakugan urges the venue not to alert the crowd, so as not to trigger a panic. Snake gets a W. Genos incinerates some creatures, and is overwhelmed by demands. This guy is turned into charcoal. Cat Pants loses to Hoodie Man. A fat guy sits on someone. A German schizophrenic almost commits a war crime. Geno steps on a Goomba and strangles a dinosaur. Sour Face and the big guy have a stare off. Geno shoots this Meat Man with his gun. Meat Man fights back, but shatters his sword and gets exploded. One monster remains. It's a nasty cockroach. Gross. Sour Face and Big Guy shed manly tears together. Saitama goes to meet his foe within the arena. Bakuzan, a known freak, is expected to win, but Saitama does his iconic move of standing still. Bakugan gets handsy with Saitama's fro and is yeeted. Sour Face is shook. Bullcut Hero finds out about the monster outbreak. The two pitiful heroes from before are given methamphetamines and report that their charge, Wango Banana, was captured by monsters. The suits are afraid of their primary investor dropping out. Genos is in combat with the Roachman, who moves with significant speed. Genos releases his secret juice and incinerates the filthy roach, leaving only his crusty leggies behind. A new threat approaches. Fubuki's goons are under the effects of Super Slut's mind control. She gets whipped from behind and uses her superior willpower to break free from the dominatrix's mental grasp. Fubuki's dress is just as strong as her willpower. Tatsumaki senses Fubuki's injuries and mercilessly dispatches the Fubuki fan club. Tatsumaki flies away into the distance. Snake feels weak and useless during his fight with Suiru. They converse. Squirrel admits to being naturally gifted and brags about not training for a few years. Tuiru is so good at martial arts, he hits Snape in the feelings. The hospital and prison are under attack while Suiru monologues about how only the strong should survive. Snake is killed. Saitama is stopping. A pink fella brags about their masterful victories to his big veiny dad, whose name is Monster King Orochi. Sour Face is defeated by Sayatama. There are only four competitors remaining. Sayatama is almost caught by Sour Face, who warns him about the schizophrenic. Gero targets a furry, but is interrupted by a horde of monsters. A talking dog experiences Nirvana and explodes. Centaur flavor Drive Knight slaughters Pleb, and so too does Amai Mask. Medusa finds a child hiding behind a rock, but is eaten whole by a corpulent gormandizer. The schizo named Chose monologues about being part of some kind of master race and being on a quest to eradicate a specific subgroup of peoples. Saitama proves that he is the faster racer. A moldy lettuce and a few gimps went to take on the purple octopus, but an S-class hero called Flashy Flash steals their quarry. Tatsumaki turns the octopus into a sphere and berates Flasher and crew for trying to help. The lettuce laments his inadequacy. There is a gathering of old men discussing Bang's pursuit of Gero. Atomic Samurai feels that it should be up to their dojo to dispatch Garu in the event that Bang fails. All agree except one, Harry Gary, who has a proposition as well. Monster Egg. It is said to give one power at the low price of losing one's humanity. Harry Gary transforms in front of probably the most powerful group of swordsmen in the world and is predictably tetris into Ash. Samurai Big Mad. It's now Sayatama versus Suiru. Suiru plays around with Sayatama's wig. Sayatama is concerned. They converse about how they both enlisted in the tournament for the the same reason, to have fun, experience something new, and get the prize money. They touch souls together and start fighting for real. Saitama is planted into the ground like a rice stalk. Suiru is only using kicks to flex his superiority. The two converse. Suiru doesn't agree with the philosophy of heroes and urges Saitama to live free and have fun. Saitama is outraged and forgets to protect his wig. He tells Suiru that he's not the only one having fun and rips Suiru's shirt off with a shockwave. Saitama is disqualified for wearing a wig, but his fight continues. Syrup goes nuts. He shatters his arm ring by punching Saitama. Saitama Tama discovers that the secret to martial arts is to look cool and accidentally defeats Suicune with his derriere. Saitama's pants are also defeated and he flees in shame. Suiru is consumed by existential despair.
Sweden is congratulated on his win, but is hesitant to accept. The audience is notified of angry boogers lurking outside of the arena. Puyu flirts. The Colosseum is attacked by birds carrying some defeated contestants. A man with a mustache is obliterated by a spiky deviant, who then tries to peddle his eggs. The heroes take up a fighting stance and are dropkicked into orbit. A freaky ogre introduces himself as Goketsu, the previous tournament's champion, and reveals that the Monster Association sent him to turn the martial artists into monsters. He throws his beans onto the floor. They pulsate aggressively. Metal Knight is a piñata in the monster's captivity. A lawyer eats a monster cell, gets swole, throws a fat guy, then is killed by the master racer. Chose consumes an egg and becomes the devil. Goku congratulates him on joining the monster mash. More of them eat of the forbidden fruit. Suiyu flirts, then decides to fight. He beats the sauce out of the little guys, then uses his breasts to parry Satan's horn move. Chose generates an orb from his pee, and Squirtu deflects. Chode and Suiru go fast, but ultimately the red grotesque is sent frothing. Goketsu makes another attempt at persuasion, and gets the full spin cycle. Suiru bounces off of Goketsu's fist, and loses his secret pouch of ketchup. Watchdog Man sits upon a throne of corpses. As Garo observes, Gerald goes for a sneaky, but the furry is fast. Sweetcorn fights back, but is overwhelmed in multiple ways. He gets stepped on, then flicked by Goketsu. Kuiru is fed to Goku's bird children. Bakuzan decides to eat like at least six servings of the monster balls and gets food poisoning. Moomin Rider struggles to fight a zesty fish. Snake and Lightning make it back from their trip to the upper atmosphere and help repel the birds. Tank Topist tackles the fish trying to eat Moomin. Lightning Max and Snake teach Suiru what it means to be a hero. Staryu is confused and afraid. He attempts to flee, but is stopped by Bakuzan, who recovered from his food poisoning. Pink Eye explains big plans to his dad. Their incursion is going well. Gokets tells the evolved Bakuzan to follow him to their super secret lair, but Bakuzan just wants to fight. He is put in his place by Gogurt and picks on Suiru. Suiru has lost the will to fight back and screams into the void for anyone to save him. Who will save him? Could there be someone? Someone to defeat the monster? There is one they fear. In their tongue, he is Sayatama, One Punch Man. Bakistan is intimidated by One Punch Man, but self-motivates. Saitama becomes aware of his tardiness, but remains stoic. Saitama can't remember where he had seen Bucket Tan before, and does a magic trick. Suiru thanks Saitama for saving him, and they discuss their circumstances. Saitama was just bored. Suiru informs One Punch Man of the Monster Association's plot, and points him in the direction of Goketsu, warning Saitama of his strength. Genos flutters by in a wheelchair, reflecting on his previous defeat by Goketsu. Saitama goes to punch the monster. Squirt tries to stop his precious bald savior, but his feeble hands could not grasp. He grieves and weeps in sorrow. Head. Suiru is inspired and asks to be Sayatama's disciple. He is instantly and unwaveringly rejected. Puri Puri Prisoner is countered by a hedgehog. He uses the power of love to defeat his foe. A phone is retrieved from his prison pocket. Upsetting news. All his fellow inmates turned into monsters and escaped. Sayatama wanders around and has an existential crisis. He reflects on why he became a hero, but begins to believe he has gained nothing by continuing to be one. King arrives in disguise as a plot device to relieve Sayatama from his woes. Sayatama confesses his emptiness and boredom to King, stating that his strength has only made him lonely and directionless. King is frustrated by Sayatama's lack of initiative, and tells him that he needs to open new paths for himself, rather than dwell on his boredom. That Sayatama's strength is not the end of his life's journey. He has forgotten that to be a hero means being courageous and taking action for the sake of others, rather than simply just for fun. And in that respect, Saitama still has strength to obtain. King's internal monologue reveals that he learned that from a manga. Saitama is inspired, but still feels empty. The two walk together and talk about games. Gero was overpowered by the furry and is reflecting on his battle when he encounters King and Sayatama being homies. He springs into action 
predicting every possible move King could make, but ricochets off Saitama's foot and into a nearby wall. Saitama tells King about his fascination with hero hunter Garo. Sonic the Hedgehog is approached by survivors of his village, urging him to join the Monster Association and rule the world. They proposition him with a quivering globule. Sonic contemplates throwing away his humanity to scoot his high chair closer to Saitama. Headquarters is concerned about the Cuban gorilla and sends the rank 8 class S hero Zombie Man. Two gorillas recreate that one Spider-Man meme. Cuban gorilla gets laid out by Cyborg Gorilla and Zombie Guy changes target. Bang and Bomb synchronize on a rooftop and discuss Garo. The Hero Association receives information revealing that the location of the monster's base is in City Z. Sitch believes that the monsters must have some kind of motive if they are intelligent enough to work in groups and suggests that they may be able to talk things over. A little worm bursts out of one of the suits. Sonic attempts to make his egg more appetizing and is aroused. Saitama and King are in the midst of a duel between men. Saitama is enraged. He finds King's pager, which goes off after he sets it down. The parasite controlling one of the suits produces a big eyeball named Giro Giro, who requests that humans leave the monsters alone in exchange for the hostage. This guy agrees immediately, but only to buy time to exterminate the mo- and he's dead. The eyeball has no intention of peace. He challenges the hero's association to an all-out warfare and explodes. Class S rank 11 super alloy blackluster prevents a mass shooting. A wee crab falls out of the suit's husk. His petite little drill cannot pierce black lusters glistening carapace. He is disintegrated under the force of the hero's meat mittens. The association is in a panic. Black Luster eases the tension in the room by flexing his rippling muscles. The monster association is confident, and Giro Giro deifies his gross dad, encouraging the others to do the same. They don't seem interested, and one of them speaks out. He is eaten like macaroni on a fork. The dominatrix from earlier is threatened, but spared from Orochi's sarlacc mouth and spaghetti arms. Giro 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 uses his meatball to check on Goketsu, who is now just a mutilated corpse. He is shook. Giro wakes from his coma and spots a hero. He wants to kill so bad, but is too injured after Saitama's kick. Giro limps back to his hidey hole. Genos is nude in front of an old man. His GP is worried about Genos, as usual. The news releases news. There are some familiar faces watching. Metal Knight has a FaceTime with a small child. He wanted to nuke the whole area, but the association declined his completely reasonable request. The Hero Association is in a panic still. Monsters flock to City Z in search for their dad. Unfortunately, Saitama is not their dad. Bowl cut hero, Terio, is peer pressured into evicting a surprise tenant from his secret base. Garo is in bad shape, but is still able to scare children. Terio asks Garyo to leave and starts crying after Garo tells him to stick up for himself. They have a heart to heart. Garo was followed by Moldy Lettuce and the rest of the circus. They're here to fuck. Garo is still human after all. He senses a trap and quickly gathers information. The heroes are a mix of class A and B. Garo panics. He reveals himself and threatens his foes. Gary powers up by becoming cell shaded and screaming. The heroes have decent teamwork. Mushroom is confused and sad. Garo is evasive and calculating. So is tracksuit guy. Things are not looking good for gravy. Lettuce urges Garo to surrender. Garo has no intention of acquiescence. Caucasian Barrett complains about the unfair treatment of A and B class heroes and insists that Grabo becomes the punching bag for his angst. The poison starts to take effect. Garo mind palaces and demonstrates his dexterity. He peers into the mires of his childhood. He was bullied for liking monsters. Frog guy, frog dies. Garo hides behind red skin suit's detached orb, which then isekais a cowboy. Tracksuit panics. The purple Power Ranger is used as a hat. Gartholomew counters the Earthbender and smites the archer. Stinger senses Garo's murderous intent. Gatling decides they should go all out just this once. Garo lures Tracksuit away, then rips an entire ecosystem out of the ground and punts Sauce Man. Gatling gun unloads. Gary uses Tracksuit for cover, breaking his his morale. Tracksuit has a flashback of when he was saved by One Punch Man. He is inspired, then dies. Stinger gets wet. Tracksuit dies again. 
Garo cautions Lettuce that a child residing in the warehouse is in the line of fire. He is not believed and deflects like a billion bullets with his moves. Gatling Gun is now Gatling Nun, goes into melee range and is Gatling Gone. Terio is intimidated and flees in terror. Garo is ambushed by Genos. Genos is a killing machine, but Garos is a killing being. Never mind, Genos is Michael Jackson. Garo emits steam in response. Saitama loses to King once again. The score is 81 to 0. They discuss the prevalence of monsters in City Z and the whereabouts of Genos. Saitama is worried that he may have been defeated and suits up. Garo is struggling to hold out against Genos' power and adapts by galloping around on all fours. Genos is disarmed, but it doesn't matter. Garo is tied to a tree. Genos charges his kill move. Garto fells the tree, evading Genos' laser. Garo evolves and proclaims himself to be the ultimate monster. A freaky flower shows up to rescue Garo, who is uninterested. Genos disembowels the monsters and monologues. Garo is interested in this Sayatama fellow. Bang? Bomb does, uh, something? Bang and Garo converse? Flashback to when they met. Garo goes, <laughs> Bang water bends furiously. So does Garo. Bang is wetter and launches Garo through the foliage. Garo begins to lose consciousness, then returns to a quadruped and undulates around. Garo becomes one with the grape juice. A big parrot monologues through the air. He is the rescue mission's commander and fears the gaping maw of his big veiny dad. Bang and Bomb go for the kill. Garo has a schizophrenic episode and relives his trauma. He is bestowed the gift of wrath by the shadow people. One of them is an authoritative dinosaur. Garo is distressed. His imaginary clone midget homunculus is beat up by the fog men. Small Garo sticks up for himself and is punished. His sense of justice is forever disfigured. Garo's psychotic experience gives him inspiration, and he screams so hard the ground flees in terror. The very colored seagull blows some wind and extracts Garo. Genos takes aim with his cannon. The resulting blast is intercepted by the big worm from several episodes ago. The triple tripod trio take to the skies, evacuating the fallen. Garo is enraged. The bird reassures him that the situation is all going to plan, and that Grandpa Poth Chattopede will clean things up. Garo writhes in frustration, for his prey was taken from him. Big Worm's weaknesses are revealed. Small girls, mechs, king, and blast. However, on the battlefield, there are none of said foils to be found. The triple threat trifecta form a phalanx of friendship. They work together to shoot an armor-piercing round. Genos admires their unity. The Big Worm is big mad. It's close fall off, then it regurgitates a spare face. The heroes are shook. Genos proposes that he be eaten by the worm, while the geezers flee. They don't agree with him, and his general practitioner astrally projects himself into Genos' mind. He doesn't care, and goes roller skating. Bang does a holler. Genos goes for the eyes, gets his foot ate, is grasped by a tentacle, then cut in twain. He mighty morphs back together, then launches himself into the big worm. Genos is all gooped up, and gives sin to Chad indigestion. His attack is ineffective, but at least he wasn't skeletonized this time. Big Worm is chuffed at his hardiness. The Triad of Trust beat a hasty retreat. Garo is just chilling with Bird Bro. Genos reflects on his actions. It is Bang's turn to duel with fate. King lures the worm with his sensual call. He trembles in fear, but holds strong. The Elder Worm wriggles aggressively and is disintegrated by Sayatama. The routed heroes are sick. Saved. Genos looks for guidance from Sayatama and is inspired by his words. King is put off by Genos' zeal. They are all blinded by the intense rays of the sun. Garo is cradled to sleep by his winged pilot. And that's the end of season 2 of One Punch Man. Hey. Uh. Like and comment if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to see more. And uh, sign up to my Patreon if you have expendable income or have fallen in love with me. Sorry for the gross title and thumbnail. I'm trying to squirm my way through the uh, refuse to get Algorithm Senpai to notice me. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs>